This video is part of the flea market flip challenge where I take a tire like this and flip it into a piece of furniture. Easy peasy, right? Hello everyone, welcome back. We are doing another furniture flip challenge and this is flea market flip style. And by that, I mean we have a flip list. Those participating in the challenge must pick one of the three projects. First choice is to create or reimagine a find into some sort of seating. The next option is functional, where you take your find and combine function with a trending and contemporary aesthetic. The last option is reimagine, is to take your find and reinvent it for a whole new purpose. I decided to go with the reimagine option. This is a set of golf cart tires that I found. I'm going to recreate them and use them for a whole different purpose. First up is to give these a good cleaning. So I spray them down thoroughly with some degreaser and give them a good old wipe down. Today's flea market flip challenge is hosted by me. I will have a button to the playlist at the end of my video, as well as have a link to that playlist in my description. So on the tire, the wheel portion has a part that dips in and I want more of a flat surface for the direction that I'm going with this. So I found these round craft boards off Amazon. One of them is pretty thin. So my idea is to combine two of them together to make them twice as thick and extra durable. So I take some good old wood glue, Gorilla wood glue, apply and spread around some glue, set the second board on top and then weight it down while it dries. So I have a round tire and some round wood boards. There's so many different directions I could take this project. So once you think you know which direction I'm going, comment it down below and the first person to guess correctly, I will pin that comment. After I got the glued boards into place, I use a couple screws to help hold them down. And then the top is ready and okay for the next step. Now the issue is that's just one side, it's the top side of the piece. On the bottom, if I use that same round 14 inch circle board and put the legs on it, which I want to, the legs are kind of close together and that's not stable because they're more center. I want the feet and legs to be spread out more, but it will be at a weird angle because this is a tire, it's not perfectly round, it's not perfectly flat. So I come up with this process to make a different size base. I draw a circle around. This is half inch plywood. It's just scrap wood that I have laying around in my workshop. After I get my circle traced around the edge of the tire, I don't want to cut that board all the way flush with the edge because I guess technically, I'm gonna have it as the top, but it's technically the side of a tire is concave, it's curved. So I want to, it to come in or under that edge about an inch and a half. So I'm not really good at drawing. I can sketch a little bit, but I just use a pencil and follow the line that I traced, making that circle about one and a half inches smaller than what the actual size of the tire is. Once I have my new size circle sketched, you can see how it is a lot larger than the 14 inch round boards that I'm using on top, which will allow extra space that I need to attach legs on the bottom. Next, I attach the board to my workbench and just use my jigsaw to cut a circle. Well, it ends up being mostly a circle. My jigsaw skills, are, um, they're getting there, you know, but I get better and better each time I use it.
I got a new toy for my workshop that I haven't used yet, and this is a perfect project to use it on. Now, I have never used this before, so don't come at me in the comments if you have nice, kind suggestions to help me use and operate this better. I will very graciously accept those, but if you're just gonna be a jerk in the comments, bleh. But this is what I do to help my circles become you know, more like actual circles. I just used that wheel and grinded the edges. You can see where my pencil marks are kind of going away and actually making the shape of my board more like an actual circle. And then I use the top sanding belt just to lightly knock off all the frayed edges. And uh, there we go. This size of circle gives me much more space to work with on the base and makes the base more sturdy. Since this is the base, I do go ahead and glue the base on and also screw it into place. Summer is in full swing in Oklahoma and most days it's over 100 degrees right now. So I am so thankful that I get to do this next part inside the AC in my living room. There is a little bit of gap here since the side of the tire is concave. So to help that transition better, I'm going to add a little bit of jute rope here. First, I applied a bead of hot glue and then this is 10 millimeter jute rope and I just put a thicker layer where the tire, filling that gap where the tire should meet the wood. Now, after I get one ring done around with a 10 millimeter rope, I do come back with a smaller rope. This is five millimeter that I also ordered off Amazon and went around the tire where the tire meets the 10 millimeter rope. So it's just kind of baby steps up to it to make the transition more smooth and not so jagged to where the tire sticks out this much but the base is only this much the next process is going round and round the tire a lot so if you have a lazy susan i highly suggest using one to help this part go more smoothly for you on the top of the wheel is that 14 inch round board there's a little bit of gap space there from transition between the tire and the wood so I go around with the five millimeter, the smaller rope, just again to make that transition go smoother when I add the actual complete outer lane, which I'm about to do next. All right, the rope is twisted, but the end is frayed a little bit. So you could probably use a lighter to heat that up and melt it together. I just added a little bit of a hot glue to the end of mine, let it cool off for a second, and then twisted it together so it would hold in place. Next, I add a big dollop of hot glue in the center of the top, and then start my rope in a coil. I'm making a circle. It kind of looks like a shell. 
and I'll go ahead and hot glue that down into center. Once that is in place and cooled off so it stays, I'll add some more hot glue and then start to use that Lazy Susan to help turn and just make a coil going around and around and around. In this process, I end up using two different types of glue. So I use wood glue and I add just dollops around here and there and then use the hot glue to apply in between the spaces of the wood glue. So my thought process on that and why I'm using two different glues is that the hot glue is more of a temporary hold to help my rope into place as the wood glue is drying and that's the more steady, longer lasting hold. I'm not gonna lie, this process took a couple hours. You can probably hear my TV on in the background. So I just put on Netflix and I just kept going with this process and it took me about two and a half hours to do the entire thing, but I did the entire top and then started going down the sides. Eventually, I flipped the piece upside down and did the sides that way, just adding some wood glue, hot glue in between, and using that Lazy Susan to help me roll the rope on. So a couple tips of advice, when you're adding the rows of rope, when you press them down, make sure you roll them down a little bit so one rope level is right next to the other. You don't want too much space in between the rope rows because you'll be able to see the black tire. The Lazy Susan also helped a lot, so if you have one of those, please utilize that. Also, don't try to sit on the floor for two and a half hours when you're over 40 because my back was killing me by the time I was done. But oh man, by the time I got to the end of it, I was so excited to have this part of the project complete. I ended up gluing that last little tidbit of the rope and then came back with my hot glue gun and just spread a little bit of glue around to help hold the ends of the rope in place. And then voila! Have you all figured out where I'm going with this yet? Now a rope covered tire is pretty cool I guess, but we can take this to a whole nother level and I mean that literally. I'm going to add some legs here to make these different heights. Now these are for me, so I'm not using exact measurements here. I'm eyeballing, but I drew a pizza on the bottom side of my tire here. And my idea is to place the legs. I want four of them because the tires are heavy and I feel like four legs are more sturdy than three. So I want them spaced out evenly, but not to where the screws are so they don't get in the way. So I came up with the pizza shape and I put my leg mounts on the lines that didn't have a screw on it. That's right. That's super technical. I ended up using two different leg sets on each tire. Both of them are legs that I found on Amazon and the kit came together with the legs, the mounting plates, and all the screws. I will make sure to link those in the description for you. After the mounting plates are completely attached, it's time to start screwing on the legs. And I feel like this is where it's all really starting to come together. And I think you should be able to kind of see where I'm going from here. I didn't video myself adding the mounting plates to the shorter legs. The, it's the same concept, just square shaped mounting plates instead of round ones. Another issue with the shorter legs is that it's unfinished wood, so you can stain them, paint them, whatever. 
I kind of like the more natural look, so I'm just going to seal, condition, and protect them with some furniture salve. Then I add a little pads on the bottom of the short legs so they don't scratch my wood floors. And these are almost done. I can't wait to show you how they turned out. They were absolutely adorable. The last step really it to do is to turn them over and work on removing all the strings from all that hot glue and get the wood shavings off. And then these are done. Here's a quick reminder of the two tires I started with. And then here is our after. Oh my gosh, these turned out so much better than I even imagined. They are so adorable. I can't believe some tires, rope, and legs came together to make these absolutely adorable plant stands. Make sure you watch the other challengers from the playlist. Let me know who you think should win. That is all I have for you today. Until next time.